Hello everybody, this is Danny back from Deep South Homestead. We're going to do another tool video today guys. We're going to cover a lot of different areas on a homestead. Tools that um, you may have, you may not have. You may know what they are, you may not know what they are. It's tools that I use here on my homestead because I do all my own work. We don't hire out anything here at our homestead. We do all of our own work and the only way we're able to do that is by having a lot of different tools. So first thing is, a lot of times people need to pour concrete around the property. Now I have a concrete mixer that goes on the back of my tractor. I can actually hook up the PTO shaft on mine and I can mix my own concrete. And that is a big plus, but that's only part of it. When you dump the concrete out, then you've got to be able to move and work the tools. Now, I have trials in the barn. I have so many different kinds of trials, I didn't even bring them out. They're called, one of them is called a bull float that you go across it with. you got finishing trials. I have all that in the barn out there. probably have, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 different ones of each one of them. But before you get to that point, when you spread this concrete out and you screed it all out with a 2x4 or something, then uh, before you get to that point, you've got to have some way to spread the concrete. A lot of people just dump it out and try to take a shovel and move it around. But guys, there's an, actually a tool right here. This is called a come along. It's made like a rake. You put it on the concrete and you pull the concrete. Now on the back of it here, it has a prong sticking out. This prong right here is made to flip over. If you have wire in the concrete, you reach down and hook that prong in the wire and you pull it up in the concrete so that when your concrete doesn't mash the wire all the way to the bottom, the wire is actually up in the concrete and it uh, makes it where it's more stable up inside the concrete. So this is called a come along. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to show it, uh, but this is it. You see the little hook on the back of it here and the, and the come along here. It comes with a handle just like a hoe or a shovel or anything else. I've got two or three of these out in the barn that I've used over the different periods of history and time. And once you get that done, and you get ready and you get it as leveled in as you can then you have what's called a bull float now a bull float is a it's an aluminum tool looks a lot like this this thing has an end on it here if i can get up closer you can see it here a handle screws into it right here and i have the handle right here the handle is usually aluminum comes in a six or eight foot piece got threads on the end of it right there and all that does it sticks up in the end of it and screws in there and once you screw it in there then basically what you do is you take the bull float this thing here and you pull it back and forth across the concrete uh, it has a wing nut on it right here you can adjust the angle so that you're not dragging it in the concrete you're actually floating it out inside the concrete and it really guys I mean if you're gonna do concrete on a homestead do your own which I do all my own concrete. Now, if I do a really big project, I will hire a finisher to come in with the machines and actually use the whirly birds and stuff like that. But on a homestead here, if I'm just doing my own small things like this porch on the back of the garage here and all, I did that all by myself. I just hand trialed it. It looks perfectly fine. Now the carport here, I actually hired a finisher to come in because I wanted a Whirly Birds slick finish on this, and we hired finishers to come in and actually do this. But smaller projects, anything I'll say six foot by six foot, like all my sidewalks here in the front. I poured all my own sidewalks. I've done all that myself. The slabs inside my barn, uh, with the exception of two of them, I poured them myself. Everything at the cabin, we poured all of our own concrete over there. On a homestead, uh, especially if you live in the south with our climate, with the humidity like it is and termites and everything, everything needs to be done with concrete, steel, or treated material. And when you do it, if you've got the right tools, it sure does make life a lot simpler. Now, if you're going to be doing concrete, you're going to probably need a pair of these, which is almost a necessity on a homestead. I've had these for years. Uh, these are a large pair of bolt cutters. I've got two or three pairs of these. I've got the big ones. 
I got little smaller pairs for cutting smaller wire, electrical cables and stuff like that. And then I've got these for, and they make them a lot larger than these. They make them up to like four foot long for cutting rebar and stuff like that. Um, we've got all of them here. And guys, these things, uh, bolt cutters for cutting reinforcement wire that goes in concrete is really good. Um, cutting chains and stuff like that. We, uh, we have several pairs of these here. This is, to, in my in, in my way of saying, these are almost a must on a homestead to have something to be able to do this with. Now, on a homestead, these right here, these are called ball peen hammers. I've got, I don't know, half a dozen of them or more uh, from the little tiny ones like this, even littler than this, up to even bigger than this one is heavy. If you're doing any type of mechanic work or anything like that, you need a ball peen hammer. I use the little one for small jobs. I use the bigger ones for the bigger jobs. Sometimes, guys, you just gotta have a ball peen hammer. You gotta have that round end. Uh, I use the small one, the round end on it a lot of times for making my own gaskets. For uh, if I've got a bolt hole through something and I lay the paper on it, you can take that ball peen hammer and tap around and cut that gasket material. You can use these things for just an array of different things on a homestead. Like I said, I've got probably a half a dozen of them or more of all different sizes. And it's just, for on a homestead, you can pick these things up at estate sales and places like that. The old, the old people knew this. When you go to working with iron or anything like that, you don't need a claw hammer because a claw hammer will bust and sh a piece of it will come off and go in you or something other. You need a good old ball peen hammers these things are i mean made out of good iron they're just good hammers to have and don't use claw hammers claw hammers will break that's one thing i can learn about them now you know if you live on a homestead there's all kinds of different things that you get involved in uh there's always the unseen you know if you're going to be uh if you're going to be putting up fencing which, if you're a homesteader, you, you got fencing, and there's no way to get away from it. You, if you got animals, you got to have fencing. I, even if you don't have animals, you need fences because good fences make good neighbors. And if you're going to do fencing, you need fencing tools. Now, I don't have all my fencing tools up here with me, but I do have a few of them. One is you need a good pair of fencing pliers. Now, they, they look a lot like this right here. This is a new pair I have. I've got like five pairs of them. I keep them everywhere on the farm. This is a new one right here. Um, this, this one is called a, called a diamond. That's the name of it. it it's made, uh, if you want to pull staples out of a post, you can stick that thing there up under the edge of the staple and tape a hammer. Hit the back side of it and drive it in and pull the staple out. If you need to cut your wire, you just slide in either side right here. You can pinch it and cut it. If you need to grab it right in here and, and put it around a post and pull it, you can do that. I mean, same thing up here. You can hook something in this and just rock it over and pull it. This thing has a a ton of different uses when it comes to doing fences. Uh, if you're going to do fences, you just about got to have a pair of these. If you're going to do it and do it right. And then when it comes to pulling wire on a fence, like barbed wire or anything like that, especially barbed wire, I have two or three of these wire pullers. I have several different sizes of these things. Now these things, I always call them a finger masher, but they, uh, they open up, if I can get it where you can see it. Let me see if I can turn it around, we can get a little bit better. These are old, old. You see this part right in here that opens up? These are cable pullers right here. This thing opens up and it's like a Chinese choker. The tighter you pull against it from this end down here, the tighter that squeezes down on it and keeps it from slipping. Like if you got to retighten a fence or something, you can hook this thing to it and it come along and you can really retighten a fence. Now I've got a little smaller pair here. It all depends on I call them finger mashers too because they'll mash the devil out of your fingers. Uh, the cable, you can hook something in this end right here and then this thing just ratchets back and forth. You put your cable right in it right here and you pull it. Guys, doing fencing, this type of stuff is invaluable. You need these on a, on a homestead. Now, lots of things on a homestead are unseen and you don't think about them. But like like me, I have a I have a sugar cane mill. Um, and you know it has barons in it. Now they're poured barons. They're a, they're a lead-based uh, 
called a Babbitt type baron that has to be poured every so often in them and if you have to be able to do that you have to be able to melt the lead down you have to be able to pour it and when you have to do something like that I have what's called a little smelty I have a smelting pot I didn't bring all that but this thing actually sits up on it and you put your lead down in this right here it's like a big giant cup it's got like a, a little pot spigot thing here on the end of it there a spout where you can um, you can pour it out of but you just heat this thing sitting on top of it and you take it when your lead's all melted in here and you can take this thing and you can pour it right into where you need to pour it at and it's uh, one of the things that you don't hardly ever use on a homestead but when you need it you need it you know it's one of those things you just have to keep in storage and stocked up now another thing on a homestead here <clears throat> If you have rabbits and chickens and stuff like that and you need to gather clover or grasses or things like that, weeds I call them, to feed the rabbits or something like that, then a hand sickle is probably one of the best things that you have. You can grab a handful of stuff and take that sickle and just pull it under and cut it off level with the ground. Don't take with just a minute. You can fill a five gallon bucket up or a basket. Take that stuff to the chickens. Or if you're just cleaning out the garden, like you got snap beans or something going, you just you don't want to pull them up. You want to leave the roots in there for the uh, nitrogen that needs to go back in the soil, or English peas or something like that. You can take this thing and go through there and just whack all that stuff off at the ground, and take it and feed it to your wildlife or um, feed it to your livestock. A good hand sickle. Now this one is old. I've had this thing for probably 30 years or more, and it was old when I got it. And that thing stays as sharp as a razor blade along this edge up in here. And you have to be careful. Now, I wear a glove on this hand when I'm using it, just, just in case. But a good hand sickle is a, is, a, is a must on a homestead. Now, lots of times when you get off out in the back pasture or something other, and you're trying to put up a gate, and you got to screw the hinge pins and all in a gate for, uh, and a post for the gate to hang on, and, and nowadays we use cordless drills and stuff like that but in the event that there is no electricity and you get back there and you need to be able to put those in there then you got to drill a hole now, there's a couple different ways to do that one I have my grandfather's old bracing bit here I can take this thing and you know you can turn it around and around and around and I've got all the bits that go with it to drill all kind of different size holes in wood and everything with uh, this one was a ratcheting one, but it messed around and froze up on me, and I have never been able to, uh, to actually get it to come loose without actually, I'm afraid, damaging my bracing bit. So I don't actually need the ratcheting motion. And that's just basically you put it in a corner and keep sitting there going back and forth, and you can ratchet a bit down through something. But this was my grandfather's. It was one of the things that he left me, and I don't even know. It's probably 100 years old at least because he had it for many, many years. Then you have one that's even older than that one. This one was used back when you were making log homes and stuff. This one here, you put the square bit in here, the end of the, uh, the bracing bit, and then you tighten it down here on each side of it. It has a clamp on each side, and you turn this thing. Now, this was for boring holes like through logs when you drove your old wooden pegs in them. Um, this, this is a true antique here, and it comes with a set of bits. It's about, I think there's five four or five different bits in this set when you get it um, i just didn't drag all that stuff out but you get the gist of it it's got a square hole in the middle of it and you tighten it down and you can sit there and you just turn the bit like that and it's kind of slow but if your bits are good and sharp it cuts pretty quick i mean it goes faster than you would think that it would go another thing i use here on my homestead a whole lot it's called a draw knife. This here, now draw knives come in lots of different shapes and sizes. This one come from Germany. This is a straight one. I think this is a 12 inch one. Uh, you can get them in, uh, in, uh, in a shape like this made for making spokes like goes on wooden wagon wheels, for carving bowls, all kinds of things like that. Uh, I use mine like when I made my log bed that we have videos on about that, making that log bed, about peeling the bark off of them. 
when I peel the bark off of the poles from my gin pole from my cane mill, we use the old big pole peeler you've seen in the last one to kind of get most of it. Then we come back behind it with this one and kind of dress it on up. Or if I'm making axe handles or hammer handles and all this kind of stuff out of hickory or uh, oak or something like that, I take this and I'll chop it out with a hatchet first and I take this and do the finishing touches on it with the, by pulling it. And uh, these things have, these things stays really sharp, so it's like a knife, so you have to be kind of really careful with it. Just a couple of tools and then on a homestead, another thing, if you're working with anything, you're always needing to clamp something. Most of the clamps you buy today in the world are cheap. Uh, I have probably, I don't know, I probably have 20, 25 C-clamps. I used to do a lot of steel work and stuff like that, welding and things like that. I have C-clamps from this big, even larger than this biggest one, and I probably got 20 of them. You know, of all different sizes, I have several of the same size if I need to clamp something to weld it or to cut it or whatever, or to just hold it in place while I'm bolting it or something like that. Guys, you cannot, you just can't beat C-clamps. You need a bunch of them. Everything you go to the store and look at today is them old hand squeeze ones or are they made out of aluminum? These are good steel ones. These things here have been around for, I mean, I've had them my whole life. I mean, I don't know how old they are. Uh, they were uh, used when I bought them. Um, this is a six inch one here and I've got them up a lot larger than that. And this one here is probably what they call a two inch one. It's a little tiny one. And guys, they're invaluable on a homestead. If you're working on something and you need to hold something, like you need to drill a hole through two pieces of iron and you need them to be exact, then you can clamp them together with these old C-clamps and you can just run a drill through them. Or if you need to weld something, you can clamp it down with this and you can take the welder and weld it. Or if you're taking a sawzall and need to cut something off with a sawzall or a hacksaw, you can clamp it down. Guys, these things are invaluable on a homestead. Another thing, if you're raising animals, specifically hogs, uh, I have two or three different, uh, two or three different pairs of these. These are called hog ring pliers. Now this is a large one. I have those that are a lot smaller. It's adjustable on the side right here. You got a little bolt here you turn and it lets this thing come wider apart here. What you do is you squeeze it and you put the, uh, open it up like that, you put the ring in here and when you let go of it, it closes down on it. And then when you get up to the pig, this part here is adjustable on the side so that you don't squeeze it too far. And you stick it in his nose and you squeeze it down real quick and it pushes that thing through his nose or a bull or anything like that. It pushes it through his nose and it prevents him from being able to do any kind of rooting in the ground or anything. I actually have two or three pairs of these of different sizes for different animals to use here on the homestead. Now, another thing that you want to think about is a good buck saw. Now this one here is one of my cheaper ones. I just grabbed it first. I've got like, I think I've got three or four more uh, that's used for cutting, actual cutting wood. This one was used by my mom. Uh, for cutting down Christmas trees because we had a Christmas tree farm. She would cut the trees down for people or let them cut their own tree down with it. And uh, this here, if you're on a farm and you need to cut small wood, bushes, clearing up land, fence rows, cutting small firewood, kindling, things like that, a good buck saw is, uh, is a must. Now I have... <laughs> A joke was actually made on my last video. It says, I bet Danny even has a cross-cut saw. Yes, I do. I have a cross-cut saw hanging in my barn out here. I just didn't bring it out here with me because it's so long and so bulky. But I do have two or three of these different buck saws, different sizes, different shapes. Um, just for that use. And then, you know, on a homestead, sometimes you need to move things around and you need to be able to bind them down. I've got... I don't even know how many chains I have. I have large chains. I've got a chain that's designed to pull a D9 dozer down here. That thing's got links on it like this big. They're like six inch long links and it's got a hook. The chain and the hook, you can't even pick it up. You gotta pick it up a few lengths at a time to put it over in or something because it's so big and so heavy. I have that. I've got several 
probably 20 foot, 30 foot, 15 foot, 10 foot chains out here in the barn, all sizes, all with hooks on the ends of them. And if I need to move my tractor, I gotta load my tractor up on a trailer and take it somewhere to do something. Then when I load it up, I gotta chain it there. And then I've got, I've got several of these here. These are called binders. Uh, used to when we was in the trucking industry and the logging industry, we had several different types of binders. We have these here for binding down loads of logs. We also had the ratchet binders, which you, you ratchet them and I've got them where you ratchet them and tighten stuff down. Um, but these old binders, you can't beat them. I've had this one here for, I don't know, 35 years or more. They just never wear out. I mean, I've got several of them out there in the barn for binding stuff down. Those are some tools that's very handy. You have to have them when you go to move things. Uh, if I need to, uh, like I got a bunch of logs and I need to bind them down together to hold them, to move them somewhere with a tractor, I can wrap a chain around them, put that binder on them and bind them down. I can pick them up and that chain and binder is not going to break. So you don't have to worry about that. But then there's many times on a homestead when you don't have a skill saw and ain't no electricity and you got to have one of these old trusty hand saws. And I have, I don't know, probably six different hand saws. Some of them are hand-me-downs. Some of them I bought at auctions. Uh, hand saws are determined by the number of teeth on here as to whether they're cross cut, ripping, or whatever they're used for. Um, I always try to, once I keep mine good and clean, I try to wax them to keep them and oil them and wax them to keep them from rusting up again. And uh, they make a tool, which I have one out in the barns. You sit on top of this and you squeeze it based on how many tooth they are per inch. It's called a set. You set the teeth on it and then you take a triangle handsaw file and you file the teeth on an angle to sharpen it and guys a good sharp handsaw will cut very fast if it is set right you know and uh, I can't I can't express enough about having a good set of handsaws now the problem today is that most of them you buy are just a little cheapies and you can bend them and they just a good handsaw is, is said to be able to actually play music on it if it's made out of a good, high-quality metal. And then last but not least, the tool that I probably use more on this homestead than anything else, I use it for everything. If I get ready to do a project, this tool is usually with me, no matter what I'm doing. And it is a crowbar. It's used for demolition. Whenever I'm building this garage that I'm standing in here now, the she shed, I kept this crowbar out here because I was constantly having to use it to prize boards, to do this, to do to move this, move that. If I'm putting up fencing, I'm hooking wire in it here, putting it on a post, I'm pulling it around sometimes. Uh, if I'm demolitioning something, I mean, I'm constantly, if I go out to work on my fences and I got to take posts apart where nails has been put in them or, or pull out nails from boards when I'm trying to clean up lumber. I probably use this thing more than anything else and I've got probably a half a dozen of them. Anything from this big long one down to little short ones. I have flat bars, uh, crow foot ones. Uh, come to think of it, I probably have close to a dozen of them. Uh, all different lengths and sizes. Uh, some are flatter than others. Some are different angles than others. Just depends on what you're going to do with it as to which one you need. To me, this is probably one of the most important tools on a homestead right here is a crowbar. So guys, today's video has been about just some more different assortments of tools on a homestead that we use here. I have many more to go, uh, things that people just don't really think about. We're going to try to get into some hand operated gardening tools and stuff like that and like I said we will eventually get up to the power tools and stuff like that uh, the diesel operated ones the gas operated ones eventually that's the more modern stuff but guys a lot of these tools on a homestead is what makes it so easy to do so many projects so many people always make a comment I don't know how y'all get done what you get done in a day Rule number one, get rid of the TV. That's the first thing. Secondly, 
have the right tools and know how to use them. Because you can sit there and you can make do with other tools. I've had tons and tons of people say, well, you, I make do with the tools I have. You, you can do that. That's fine. You can make do all you want, but you're wasting your time making do with something. You can take the right tool and do something in one minute where you can make shift and have to ag be aggravated and work with something else, and it might take you 10, 15, 20 minutes to do a one-minute job. It really makes a difference, guys, having the right tool. So I hope today uh, our tool video for this week has been a little educational. It showed you that um, there are more tools on a homestead that needs to be used, and maybe you see these, you can pick them up and have them on your homestead, and you'll actually be able a chance to use them and figure out, hey, it does make life a lot easier on a homestead to have the right tool for the right job. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.